For this video, I'm going to review food chains and food webs. I'm going to talk about where they start, where they end, the different paths they take, and the sort of movement of energy through that chain. So first, a food chain. If we think about a chain, a necklace chain, or an actual chain, there are things that are linked together in order. They can create a line. So if we think about a food chain, they start with abiotic elements, primarily the sun, and then those abiotic elements lead to biotic elements. So first we would have our producer, and then we would have our consumers. So those things that consume or eat our producer. So we would have um, our plants, and then a herbivore, or a, a herbivore, uh, or an omnivore, and then a carnivore. So for here we have, I don't know what this is, some kind of greenery, and then a chicken would eat sort of the seeds that come from th that, th uh, that plant, and then me as a human being, I eat the chicken. So the energy flows in one direction. The chicken doesn't get energy from me when I'm eating it. I think there's that reason is obvious. Um, but maybe more so for animals that are, organisms that are consuming plants, the plants don't receive energy flow from um, the thing that's eating it. The energy flow goes in one direction. Now, the number of links in the chain of um, the food chain they can vary, right? You could have two links, um, and sort of the sun is sort of a given, so it's not listed in the, in the links. The, the food chain begins with sort of that, that producer. Uh, so for this, there's only two links in this food chain. It's a blueberry bush, yes, it's a blueberry bush, and a bear, so the bear eats the blueberry bush. And that's the end of that chain, because there isn't any, another consumer above the bear. And then it, it could have more than two links. So in this case, this food chain has algae, and then the mosquito larva eats the algae, and then the sunfish eats the mosquito larva, and the smallmouth bass eats the sunfish. Uh, so we have our we get and we start with our producer, and then we move along our consumers. And in this situation, we have a herbivore that's eating our algae. So our mosquito larva is our herbivore. And then we have a primary carnivore. So the sunfish is a carnivore, and it eats the mosquito larva. But we also have a secondary carnivore, the smallmouth bass, that it's eating the sunfish. And again, the energy is flowing in one direction. As each organism eats another organism, it gains that energy. Um, and it keeps going until we get to our um, decomposer, our scavenger, detrovoid, detrovore, detrovore. But it's not always that simple. It, you know, the energy doesn't always flow um, in, a ch in, a, in a food chain. Um, there are often food webs, and that's usually what a population in a given region, you're going to have food webs, where you could have multiple consumers eating one producer. So you all have this graphic at home, so if you want to take it out and have a look at it, and it talks about, it demonstrates how we have our producers at the bottom here, uh, and then it shows the energy flow and how it goes from organism to organism. And you can see that algae, it's consumed by four different organisms. So it's not just a simple relationship of one, um, one consumer and one producer. You can have more than one consumer consuming one producer, which again is that importance of balance where if we eliminate that one producer, how many consumers are affected and how many secondary, you know, primary carnivores and secondary carnivores are ultimately affected by that change in the flow of energy. Um, and, and, and the path, you know, so that you can follow it, so it goes from your producer and ends with our carnivore. 